Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and a blessed advent to you. We certainly would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, today our guest again is Julie Ann Seguir. She is also known as Julie Tabuli, and she's going to tell us about that cute little mm -hmm. name that she's got. She's a Lebanese American Maronite Catholic chef and an award-winning author and a television host. And today, she, you know, yesterday and today, she uh, brought beautiful uh, delicacies of S sweets lovely for Christmas, sweets. Yeah. Yes, and um, she was telling us a little bit about them. But today, we're going to get to eat them, yes. and that's going to be fun. Yes. Um, and well, I'm sure our mouths will explode with flavor. Our crew here has been very disciplined. There's they no bites <laughs> taken out of them. There's some of them, are, they're all there. And so the very disciplined people here today. But you know, Joy, you were sharing about uh, the sweet name, Julie Tabuli and so on. And some people might think, oh, well, she must just have thought that up when she was getting ready to, you know, go on PBS and do the Create Show or whatever it is. But she shared in that first show, and I hope she shares a little bit more about it, that the investment in that name, the investment that, that history, tradition, her family, the story of Lebanon, all of this. Mm -hmm. She was so impressed by this, soaked it all in, and uh, you know, became this Julie Tabuli to represent Lebanese cuisine and Mediterranean cuisine, but also the Maronite Catholic faith, yes. um, her upbringing. So it's all about faith, and it's about family, and it's about food, and uh, how they all kind of work together. I mean, it's a real gift and a little bit of a burden that God's given to her, though it doesn't seem like a burden because she really wants to represent genuinely yes. her people who she loves so very much. And so many cultures come to the United States and, and it's good that you keep <clears throat> your culture. It's good that you keep the importance, especially of recipes and, and foods and treats and worship. Um, sometimes people come from other countries and they come to America yeah. and not all the things that we have to teach them our good things. Um, yeah. And they break down their culture. So it's important. Yeah. You can be in America, that's part of being American. Yeah. But you keep your culture um, <coughs> and, and celebrate who you are in your traditions. Yeah. So we're coming up. It's Advent, coming up on Christmas. You want to talk, talk about some good food uh, that Julie has, you can go to her website, julietabuli.com, right? Yes. I don't see it here, but that, I'm remembering it. And so this is perfect for this time. Of year. Don't go away. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy. And today, our guest again is Julie Ann Seguir. She is also known as Julie Tabuli. She's a Lebanese American Maronite Catholic chef and an award winning author and a television host. And you could go to her website, julietabuli.com. Well, Julie, welcome back to At Home with all of your beautiful desserts for us. Um, we're going to eat them later in front of you all. <laughs> and, um, but first, tell yeah. our family, for those who, who might not even know mm -hmm. what tabbouleh is, yes. tell them what tabbouleh is yes. and then how did you get that name? Yes, well, thank you again so much for having me. And um, it's just so wonderful and beautiful to be here. And I always say that's probably one of the most popular and one of the first questions I often get asked by I, all of my loving and, and loyal um, viewers and fans out there. And I say, you know, Julie Tabuli is not my real name, my birth name, but it might as well be at mm -hmm. <laughs> this point. Um, but Julie Tabuli uh, was a childhood nickname of mine uh, that my uncle Dominic, uh, who's also my guardian, uh, he helped to raise me and my uh, three older siblings uh, with my mother after my father passed away uh, when I was a very 
um, very young, five, six years old, and he's just gave me the nickname one yeah. day. Mm -hmm. He just started calling me it. So, um, you know, is it, uh, I think, kind of like tabbouleh, uh, obviously it rhymes, you know, <laughs> that's a given, um, but, you know, tabbouleh, the, the dish itself, it's it's very, um, you know, center stage, you know, it's, it's fairly celebratory, uh, famous Lebanese, uh, Middle Eastern and Mediterranean dish. It's always on the table for um, family get-togethers and gatherings and special celebrations. Um, so I, I think the dish also kind of, um, you know, reminded my uncle of my, maybe my mirrored personality, if you will, um, you know, and, uh, and so my whole family had been calling me it my whole life. Um, and then, you know, years later, um, my background is in television and in writing, yeah. producing and hosting. That's what I went in my grooming in college years and working in New York. Um, then it was this life-changing, really once-in-a-lifetime experience that me going to Lebanon uh, for the first time, because I'm first-generation uh, Lebanese-American born yeah. here, staying with my sito, my grandmother, my mother's mom, and uh, returning back to the States after a month-long visit with her and all of my family uh, there. And it was just this God-given yeah. epiphany mm -hmm. that was came upon me that, you know, there's no real re representation of Lebanese cuisine and culture and our faith and, and traditions, um, and you're going to be it, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was wowed by the yeah. notion, wrote it in my journal, which I still have today. Um, this is like 2007, 2008, Julie Tabuli, Lebanese cuisine, mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> many, mm -hmm. of, uh, many of my, uh, my viewers and fans out there know my mother, my mm -hmm. amazing mother, who, mm -hmm. who taught me everything I know and more, um, and wrote that down in my journal. And called my mom up. I said, I'm going to move back home, upstate New York, and teach people how to make yeah. our food and share our culture and our mm -hmm. faith with everyone. And she said, okay, mm -hmm. let's do it. And mm -hmm. that's the Julie Tabuli journey yeah. now mm -hmm. over a decade, which I cannot believe. Yeah. And I'm still, um, thank God, uh, going strong you know, with it. It so. was a nice thing. It was a cute thing as you grew up and family saying Julie Tabuli, but it, it's almost like, not to exaggerate it, but you know, God changes your name when he calls you to something. Mm. Abram, Abraham, it got changed. And, you know, you're who you are. And then it was like, you no, know, Julie to mm -hmm. But it meant, it meant you're going to be an ambassador. You're going to be a representative. Mm -hmm. And that's a heavy thing. It's a beautiful thing mm. to represent that great, great nation, a nation mm. of great beauty and joy and suffering. Yeah. You know, you're going to say yeah. you're an ambassador for them. You yeah. better be, you know, and right, you know, mm -hmm. so it's that. You take that seriously. I... <laughs> I take it, you know, I, yeah. I say I don't take myself seriously. People yeah. that, you know, right. know me on, on my show, you know, and very, I want to be very joyful and very, very yeah. celebratory of it, but I do take being a representative, yeah. uh, knowing the food and the and the roots of the food right. and the significance of the recipes inside and out. I go to I don't go to Google first. I go to my mother first, right. <laughs> right. and mm -hmm. I really um, she's just a source, a wealth of information yeah. because I tap into her mind of when did Sitho, you know, what did she make around that time of year? Mm -hmm. What was yeah. she making for Good Friday? What was she making for Epiphany? Uh, what Take me to that time when you remember going to the Bastan, to the land, or the Janaini, her mm -hmm. garden mm -hmm. in Lebanon. And so my mom then transports me in her yeah. storytelling mm -hmm. of my grandmother, of her remembrances as a young girl in Lebanon, she transcribes it to me, and then I literally get transported, you know, kind of spiritually into that time yeah. and picture myself there with my mother and my grandmother mm -hmm. and kind of like a fly in the wall in a sense and kind of looking in and, yeah. and trying to just absorb as much as possible and then kind of transitioning that now to modern day and how can I communicate this in a Lebanese American way mm -hmm. for all people, not just the right. Lebanese people, yeah. the Mediterranean, yeah. I, the beautiful yeah. Italian, the Greeks, yeah. all the different Mediterranean cultures, the Middle Eastern cultures, yeah. the Arabic cultures. I have a wonderful, you know, uh, Eastern European audience out there. Okay. Of, of, you know, just so it's then yeah. it's it's and then of course putting my fresh you know, take on everything while still staying true to traditions yeah. mm -hmm. um, as now the third uh, third uh, woman yeah. carrying on um, yeah. the, you yeah. know, our legacy, our Lebanese legacy yeah. um, and our faith. And, and the recipes are really 
I, I try to share this as much as possible with so many people out there because I, I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, Julie, I wish I had learned those recipes of my mother or my grandmother or my aunt or somebody yeah. in their family or their father or grandfather. Mm -hmm. I'm going to exclude all the right. men in my family right. cook. Right. Um, my brothers cook, my uncles mm -hmm. cook, everybody. And they're really more than just food. They're mm -hmm. really the key to your yeah. history and yeah. to your culture and to those important people in your family that carried on. And if you don't take the time now, they'll be lost forever. Mm -hmm. Those those recipes, right. they won't be quite the same, you know, without yeah. really yeah. taking that time with yeah. the, the with those people that carried them on for so long in your family. So right, I'm because helping, you could somebody you know, could write a recipe down. Right. But all of a sudden they do it a different way. And or they'll right. say, Oh, right. it doesn't taste anything like mom's. Right. But you're doing the exact <laughs> same thing. Right. But it's like right. mom does it this way, you know? Right. Well what did she do different? What you know? And really, the beauty of all food is the love that gets put into it, yes. right? Wow. And yes. so it's imparting, you want to bless somebody yeah. with this food. You yeah. want to yeah. you want to give the best yeah. of yeah. Um, and share that yeah. because it, there is such a breakdown in culture. Yeah. And nobody's taking the time to sit yeah. and, and to learn or to be with each other. Yeah. And then it's after they're gone, they're like, well, why didn't, why didn't I do that? And it's yeah. too late. So now it's is the late. time, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, absolutely, 100% joy. That, that phrase, the love in the meal, yeah. we use that in our home. Yeah. That when our kids eat or grandkids eat, they say, you know, Nona, we taste the love in this meal. Yeah. You know, and you just don't get that at a fast food market. You know? and, and it's yeah. love in the meal, but, and you, you express that. I mean, you have, you're putting love into the meal, love into you know, your people, mm. and you're expressing that. Mm. It's just so important. I want, as a guy who goes to Google <laughs> for Lebanese cooking, <laughs> and it sounds terrible, I don't go to Google for Italian yeah. cooking. I go, <laughs> so I, I, you know, I, I just been thinking, you know, yeah. it, it's so, it, it's different, the Lebanese cooking yeah. versus the Italian cooking. They're both yeah. great, I, you know, I am, Oh, an Italianese, right? Yes, Italianese I call it Italianese. Are, okay. I started meeting all my Lebanese Italian yeah, yeah. Uh, people, and I said, "You're Italianese." Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but your food, to me, seems to be has so many nuances to it, mm. so many flavors mm. to it, and and the Italian cooking seems to be a little bit more consistent. Mm. So, mm -hmm. speak to us. You know, I had to look up what are the key ingredients that mm. Lebanese people use, and what are the spices that they use. Tabbouleh, you know, if, if nobody's yeah. had tabbouleh, right. there's so many tastes in that. Yeah. Like it's incredible. We have an Italian salad. I know what's going in, you know, oil and vinegar <laughs> and so on. Mm -hmm. But like the tabbouleh, it's like, what the heck is in this? Speak to mm -hmm. us about some of the ingredients yeah. that that are kind of perpetual with Lebanese people and mm -hmm. where do they come from. Because yeah. where you are, yeah. you have some seasonings that other people don't have in other countries. Yeah. What do you use and what's it about? Yeah, well, first off, our number one ingredient, my brother, uh, Freddie, like, loves to always uh, ask my mother and I, and that is love. That's 100% sure because we really are cooking with love and sharing with love and cooking generously with love, and you can taste it. Um, but the, Medi the Lebanese is a Mediterranean uh, cuisine. Uh, Lebanon, where it's uh, situated, the proximity to the Mediterranean Sea, um, it's just so beautiful and it's really we're cooking with the seasons, you know, uh, and very much how we cook, you know, here uh, today. My mother and I, thanks be to God for her beautiful, glorious garden uh, where she grows everything under the sun um, and we cook along with the seasons. Uh, the primary, it's yeah. uh, plant-based and uh, there's, you know, olive oil a lot of abundance of herbs. Everybody that knows me out there knows I love my herbs, the parsley, the mint. So our mint is like to your basil, if you will, mm -hmm, you know, lots mm -hmm. of fresh lemon. I always use fresh lemon. That's <laughs> uh, good olive oils, a lot of parsley. lentils. Mm -hmm. Yeah, parsley. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, good beans. Of course, many people uh, know and love uh, our hummus out there. Uh, and uh, all sorts of different, we do a lot of fava beans and uh, different, and different. tons of, mm -hmm. yeah, beautiful, yeah. you know, sources of, uh, you know, of plant-based protein. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And minimal consumption of meats, although when we do do the meats, uh, you know, whether the proteins of uh, beef, or we're famous for our lamb dishes, mm -hmm. of course, uh, it's significant, especially at significant uh, celebrations and holidays, um, often with a lot of garlic, and uh, we call it tomb is garlic, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. again, olive oil and, and lemon. Um, beautiful salads and soups, of course, kibbe. I, I can't leave out kibbe. Mm -hmm. It's our national mm -hmm. dish of Lebanon, and uh, there are so many different variations of kibbe, which is the base of it, um, and kibbe nai, 
for uh, all of my Lebanese uh, watching um, is a, a, a raw version. Uh, it's very um, almost similar to like a steak tartare of beef carpaccio. Yeah. Uh, and it's kneaded with uh, bulgur wheat, which is a cracked wheat, yeah. very fine. It comes in different cuts, like uh, fine, medium, and coarse. And it's kneaded um, into this beautiful consistency, and it's just super flavorful. Yeah. It's really indescribable. You have to kind of taste kibbe <laughs> <laughs> for yourself, just like tabbouleh. Um, but there's a multitude, and it's a full cuisine, because many people, um, which is wonderful, they know the popular dishes like hummus mm -hmm. and baba ganoush, grape which leaves. is grape mm -hmm. leaves, tabbouleh, mm -hmm. falafel. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a really full breadth of, um, you know, uh, of cuisine. And, of course, the bread, which is so symbol, uh, symbolic yeah. to our faith. Mm -hmm. And there's so many beautiful breads. Yeah. My mother is the dough master, and um, we have just, some, you know, the amazing, amazing yeah. uh, you know, different recipes yeah. that we prepare. I and saw one of your shows, it, and your you mom know. had this, you know, she was just weaving this dough or something. It was like yeah. a big, and she was really going through that. Yeah, I, don't, she, I know all was going on, but it looked pretty intense. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is intense when she's, <laughs> in a good way, but, um, yeah. you know, and, and just the significance of her always blessing, you know, that's what I was uh -huh. taught. And that's kind of being mm -hmm. right there beside mm -hmm. somebody versus right. right reading a recipe mm -hmm. and her making the sign of the cross for God to help to bless that, you know, that dough to rise, mm -hmm. um, which it does, you know, so gloriously. And then from there, I mean, she's, ever since <clears> I was a little girl, remember especially on Sundays her making just you know five ten pounds of, of dough and, and that's really what her mother my grandmother my yeah. sitho did in Lebanon mm -hmm. um, for you know all of her children and family too and they would bake on Sunday and mm -hmm. all the different types of uh, yeah. you know breads and dough pies and pastries that we have in the Lebanese cuisine. Tell us so. what's going on Christmas yeah maybe into a fifth <laughs> what, what, what's going on what, what's happening what's yeah. being made What's happening? I just, I mean, we all we all love in, in our family the Christmas season and, you know, that an Advent and, and that just waiting, um, you know, for our Savior. And it's just so beautiful. We're all in the kitchen, which, which I absolutely love. And um, we uh, traditionally in our culture, we prepare the Lebanese sweets uh, for the celebration of, um, of Christmas. Um, for the Epiphany, there's also the significance for the Feast of the Epiphany. Um, and that, again, those are stemmed back from my grandmother in Lebanon um, with, uh, and many still, pra you know, thankfully, and thank God, practice this today um, in Lebanon and throughout America and throughout the world. We have Lebanese all over, mm -hmm. all over the world. Yeah. Um, and it's all different types of fried doughs. Azlebia, uh, which is one of the most, uh, I would say, popular um, ones, uh, types of fried doughs that's prepared. And it's shaped long, um, and it's uh, basically referencing John the Baptist. Um, pointing to Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's awamat, which is a kind of a circular type of fried dough that's uh, dipped in our orange blossom syrup, mm -hmm. which I love so mm -hmm. much. Um, and all, a couple other different types of um, sweets and pastries that are fried, if, if you will, that are prepared for the Feast mm -hmm. of the Epiphany. So um, so those, again, those traditions are so sacred from my grandmother and my yeah. sitho to mm -hmm. my mom to me. And I, and I love... I just love the learning and, and there's always stories still to be told mm -hmm. and, you know, and my mother telling me about how yeah. my grandmother prepared the dough the night before. And again, I just, <laughs> I just really put myself mm -hmm. in those, yeah. and mm -hmm. those are those stories are, they're, they're just, they're priceless. They're, mm -hmm. it's just a treasure. So I just try to be a sponge and absorb it all and then hopefully share it with everybody else. And, um, you know, whether these are traditions in their families or yeah. not, and hopefully yeah. they can you know, adopt those to become traditions, mm -hmm. you just, know, in their family. We just have about a minute till our break, and we're going to carry you over. Where can people find these recipes? Mm -hmm. You have a cookbook? Yes, yeah, okay. Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen, um, all available on my website, julietabuli.com, and welcome to all. And I really um, try to simplify and take the mystery, if you will, out of... They are makeable. They are very makeable. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we've really, um, you know, just thanks be to God and thanks to my mother. Um, I really, she, you know, so, so much patience um, with me. Yeah. And I wanted to break down every single recipe which we've successfully done yeah. so people at home could successfully recreate these in their homes mm -hmm. and you know whether they're whichever culture yeah, they great. come from because sometimes so you hear they're these, full, they really are you know, people are you know, making something that there's some in particular it's kind of like I don't think I can ever do that 
It's yeah. just so complicated and so many things. But well, it becomes good. overwhelming. It's like, oh, yeah. I'll just wait for the festival to right. happen. Right. Yeah. Eat it then. Yeah. But we're yeah. going to carry you okay. over for the final segment. And hopefully, we're going to get to yes. to taste these these beautiful uh, sweets here for Christmas. Julie Tabuli, T A B O U L I E dot com. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. when you're at home with Jim and Joy. Probably one of the best parts is we're going to get to eat some of, beauty, of beautiful Julie Tabuli's recipes. So Julie, I would like to try okay. the one way down on the yeah. end so okay. you can tell me yeah. what it is okay. and what I'm going to eat. Okay. You described it so well in the other All show. All right, wonderful. So this is um, called kanafi. Okay. And it's uh, sheets of uh, phyllo dough um, uh, with a cream filling called ashta in a pistachio powder on top. Shall I just pick up a piece for yeah, you? Yeah, to, yeah, just pick to, one, a small okay. one. Go down that okay, way. This, there okay, you, go. you tell me which one. Okay, I'm trying to get that. There you go. Clean, okay. So it's dough. There's some this dough. This is phyllo dough? And, and, yes. And then phyllo it has an dough. orange. Light pastry. Yes, yeah. and then it has an orange blossom syrup. Um, and this is one type of canapé because there's another one that yeah. I make with shredded phyllo dough, very oh. finely, finely shredded with the cream filling, and then I flip it. I flip that entire thing and then oh douse it with the orange blossom syrup. It's magnificent. Oh, you know, you try well, this is what yeah. I was saying, okay. too. About, there's so many nuances and things. You pick what you want, babe. Well, I'm going to eat everything. Okay. Like that. Which one what shall I get to? Give him so, the one with the almond. Okay, so the almond one, this is um, so, so, so Maybe delicious as well, equally. This is called uh, the special one with three names. So Namura, uh, Harista Laz, or Harissa. It's a semolina and yogurt, uh, homemade Lebanese yeah, yogurt like called Leban, and a cake sweet, if you will, mm. with a blanched almond. Mm. And again, my, my lovely, I love my orange blossom syrup, so I typically make the orange blossom. When I'm uh, preparing sweets more with, um, with a lot more pistachios, mm -hmm. um, we have a beautiful bird's nest and uh, some other very mm. sweets. I'll do a rose water syrup. Uh, mamul is a special cookie that we make for uh, Easter um, and uh, that also has special significance uh, to Jesus as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, that uh, the base of that cookie dough, we put both the orange water um, essence and the rose water essence mm -hmm. and some other sweets, we combine the two essences just a little bit. Yeah. It's just a hint of it. Um, everything is very delicately. This is incredible. Thank yeah. you so much. Delicioso. Thank you. Okay, one baklava, okay. or how do you okay. say? This is Lebanese batlawa. Okay, batlawa. And I'll take a bite, and then you take a bite, and then you would have had all three. Okay, yes, up. yes, wonderful. And again, and we most have, people are probably more familiar with yes, this, right? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are differences in the way the Lebanese prepare, um, you know, versus um, Greek. Greek and mm -hmm. other Mediterranean cultures. There's mm. a lot of other Mediterranean cultures. This, um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. There's a nice, very light hand, I would say, mm -hmm. in the way that I was taught from my mother, that my mm -hmm. grandmother, um, meaning my sweets are not too sweet, you'll find. Yeah. They're yeah. not too rich. Um, mm -hmm. You can take an, another bite um, and not feel like, right. oh, wow, that is, right. that's or really syrupy. Or you're going to do syrupy. a sugar coma. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Like, oh, my God. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I cannot and, exaggerate mm -hmm. how good these are. Thank you so much. Thank they you. They are delicious. Thank totally you. Totally delicious. Thank you Now, does so your much. parish community, do you do a Lebanese festival also where you invite mm -hmm. the community in to experience your beautiful church family? We do. Um, every year uh, we have the Taste of Lebanon mm -hmm. uh, uh, for my church, uh, St. Louis Gonzaga in Utica, New York. Uh, my mother and I um, prepare yeah. many of the sweets oh, yeah. that, you're, mm -hmm. <laughs> that you're enjoying today uh, to help, uh, you know, raise money. Uh, for the church and community and, and again inviting the mm -hmm. entire 
uh, community um, to experience the cuisine and the culture. And, um, you know, I also, and, and, I, and, and thanks be to God, you know, I, I do, um, and we do support other uh, Lebanese uh, mm -hmm. churches um, mm -hmm. uh, throughout the country as well. And I get many invitations, so I try to answer them all. <laughs> and I um, sometimes will do like a live culinary performance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, at the festival to help draw even more there people um, and bring them up. Everybody mm -hmm. loves to cook mm -hmm. along with Julie yeah. Tabuli and make different things. Um, so it's a really, you know, it's wonderful too to have our uh, traditional Lebanese music and sometimes we'll mm -hmm. have those dancers and, you know, every, and, you know, and then the faith and then, you know, it's just all comes together because it's the faith and the food and the family and the mm -hmm. community. So it's like all intertwined yeah. and all welcoming to all people. And the, everybody just loves. Yeah. I, I think, it, you know, our Lebanese culture is, it's the hospitality, it's that generosity all over the world, all over the country, all of the people that we, thank yep. God, my mother and I and our family get to meet and greet. We meet so many people that share stories of other Lebanese yep. people that were so giving to them or their yep. Lebanese neighbors that, mm -hmm. you know, shared their, you know, um, kibbe yep. or, yeah. you know, uh, but Lao was with or beautiful uh, chicken and rice dishes or yep. manjadra, lentil mm -hmm. dishes. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's our giving nature and our, you know, really which had spread across not only the U.S., but across the world and sharing that Lebanese love. Beautifully you said. know. So. Unfortunately, we've got to conclude at this okay. point. Thank you. You are, <laughs> Thank you. You are a gift to the church. Thank Hope you. you enjoyed uh, this show today. Go to juliebuli.com. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.